come back to the bond. We brought the bond together. It is time to have another conversation here on Fifi Marvel on YouTube. If it is your first time, I am grateful to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't go. Stay. Enjoy all the content that we have for you here. Let's talk some football. Let's do a lot of the analysis. Let's discuss a lot of stuff because this is the best place that you get everything football analysis. So, I just go back for my day job, but I forgot to put together the pre-match analysis of Chelsea versus Newcastle United for you. Again, while I was going through my day, I'm seeing that a lot of people on social media are discussing something really, really, really funny. And it is the fact that people are discussing that Conor Gallagher may be sold by Chelsea. That is outrageous. Outrageous. I mean, the fact that that conversation is even up for discussion is, it's, it's, is the worst of it all. There is no way Conor Gallagher leaves anything. You see, in football teams, there are people... Now, the game isn't just about positions again. I remember when people consistently um, asked questions about Conor Gallagher. When people consistently said... He wasn't good enough. People consistently said, how can Conor get into this Chelsea team? Who is Conor Gallagher? He wasn't good enough. Blah, blah, blah. A whole lot of things. Yes, he's not your most technical midfielder. But really, what Conor gives to the team is very important. He gives aggression and physicality. And you want somebody to run those channels, chase people down, lead the press, set the tone for the press. It is Conor Gallagher. And you don't let a guy like that out of your team. It is, it is a non-starter. And non start, I repeat, for anybody who watches football to say that Chelsea are going to let Conor Gallagher go. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense. I'm telling you that um, it's just a negotiation tactic, most likely from one part um, of, 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 of the coin, either of Conor's, um, Conor's, um, Conor's entourage or Chelsea's own leaking information to the media, like telling them that, oh, we are willing to listen to offers from Conor Gallagher so then maybe um, so that it forces Conor to get back to the negotiating table then he will take whatever amounts that he has to take. Conor is one of the captains of the club. Moshe Potetino said it yesterday and that is it. It should end it. You can't sack Conor Gallagher. You can't get any other Conor Gallagher on the market. Enzo Fernandez, Moise Caicedo, Romeo Lavia, Leslie Gochuku, Kandi Chuku Emeka. These guys don't have what Conor Gallagher has. He is different with respect to intensity and aggression. He is the best chasing down people, winning the ball back. If you want to chase games, he's the guy. Yes, there are times you're going for it. Chelsea would have to do with him when they want to control games. But really, in terms of being the guy to chase down people, going after people, being aggressive, winning the ball back, Conor Gallagher is the guy. And I don't want you to listen to anything, any stuff like that. So yeah, that's it. Gallagher story. I mean, it's it's even weird that people are still holding this conversation because immediately I saw those tweets. I'm like, this is not possible. It doesn't make sense. And yeah, of course, but of course, it's Chelsea. Sometimes the things that we think are not possible um, tend to happen. But yeah, let's get into it. Newcastle are without almost 11 players. Most of their players are injured. But mind you, the last time Chelsea played Newcastle, most of their players were injured. The last time Chelsea did play them, Alexander Ishak wasn't supposed to start. He did start. Um, Callum Wilson who had issues, Miguel Almeron, Anthony Gordon, these guys all had issues, but they ended up starting. The issue with Newcastle is even far bigger when you play them away at the St. James's Park, where the tired side fans pull them on, they edge them on, they, they, they get the best out of them, they push them to different limits, and it's almost always difficult to play them when you play them at the St. James's Park. Um, you listen to Mauricio Pochettino's pre-match press conference and he talks about a wide range of stuff. First of all, the fact that the Carabao Cup is um, one of the most feasible ways that Chelsea can measure anything success this year. And I think that is true. Um, he, Mauricio Pochettino, was a Torian Mosman in 2015 when Chelsea last won the Carabao Cup. He was a Torian Mosman in 2015 at Wembley. Chelsea went on to win that Carabao Cup. Now, he would want to win that for himself. Chelsea would want to win it. I know that for a coach like himself, he want to play down the thoughts that, yes, he wants to win the Carabao Cup. He did that. He tried to play down the thoughts. But he knows that it's an important trophy. 
It's also an important trophy to try and get players who have been injured for a while, some minutes in their tank, and then get them up to speed. And that's why in that interview, he did mention that Christopher Nkuku has trained well, and that he's going to get at least 20 minutes on the game against um, Newcastle United, which is good stuff for Chelsea. If, New if Christopher Nkuku, Nkuku is getting 20 minutes, it's good. Um, it means that the next game against Wolves, he may get um, even more minutes in there, which is very, very good one. So, um, Chelsea are preparing for Newcastle. Um, we know we've analyzed Newcastle before. We've spoken about their strength. We've spoken about their downsides. We've spoken about um, the things that we can use to, to beat Newcastle. And essentially, the game tomorrow should be about control, total control. Earlier today, I posted a video of how Chelsea have seen some very good signs in terms of Chelsea's progression, um, creating chances against low blocks getting the best out of teams like Sheffield United and being the best at it. Chelsea will want would have to do even better. It's a chance for Chelsea to better that and make it even um, extra cool and stamp it in there with respect to the job of creating chances, opening spaces for attackers to get into and the quality of the guys like Mihailo Modric um, to get more minutes in their time, get experience and then grow into the game. So yeah, um, the game against Newcastle has come at the right time. But also, do you remember that Chelsea have had um, wishy-washy um, 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 times in recent times where they win this game, the next one they draw or they lose, they win that game, the next one they draw or they lose. And this time, you would expect them to go ahead and get a win. You would expect them to um, do some good stuff and then end up winning some games. And in the building of momentum, there is no other game than winning a game in the Carabao Cup that sends you to the semi final. And then against a team uh, who has been very good in recent times in English Premier League and, of course, in cup competitions. Mind you, they were in a cup competition last season final so it's a team that knows how to play cup, cup, cup competition so um, if you want to win then it is time for you to go ahead and show your metal and then beat them so Chelsea will have to do everything possible to beat Newcastle it's a big chance it's a big opportunity it's not a big ask for them because they can't um, because the team played seemingly well in certain aspects of the game against um, Newcastle United against um, Sheffield United and they would have to do better this time so the game is tomorrow um, so Nkuku has returned to full training. We will have your partial training. Um, which, right, um, ben Chihol is also training. Most of the guys are training. And at least I see there is good stuff around um, Cobham and tomorrow. I'm expecting the same lineup that Chelsea played against where um, Sheffield United with. I think that the balance of the team. So first of all, let me start with Jogi Petrovic. So Petrovic was um, very brilliant, very, very good, calm, composed on the ball. Um, he was excellent in exactly how he wanted to play. He dictated the pace of the game well. And I think that he is very calm. I, I remember that when he was being bought from New England Revolution in the MLS, one of the things that was trumpeted about Pe Georgi Petrovic was the fact that um, he was an, a, a very good shot stopper, right? So his shot stopping ability was up there with the best goalkeepers in the world. But really not much was said about his footwork and his ball playing ability as a goalkeeper. Um, well, training with Mauricio Pochettino's staff and then um, Lulu Ten at, at Cobham. I'm, I'm thinking that even if he didn't have that, he's, he's developing that shit. And he showed glimpses of that in the game against Sheffield United. A bit, Sheffield really put Chelsea under a lot of pressure. Newcastle will press and mix it up. They will press high sometimes. They will sit mid sometimes. They will come low sometimes. And will try to get the best uh, out of themselves in a game like this. They will try and put Jogi Petrovic under pressure because they know that um, Petrovic um, is new to the English Premier League and then um, the English game. And then they want to like rattle him a little bit. But, Jogi is, is, is a Russian, and, and, and I don't think that he's somebody that will get to be rattled easily like that um, in that game against Newcastle United. So, yeah, I think it's going to be imposed. The two center backs, Thiago Silva, Benoit Belashile, they did two brilliant stuff in the game against Sheffield United, backing the press up, making the pitch constricted, high line. Um, Thiago, for once, forgot about his lack of pace because he knew that um, um, Benoit Belashile will help him with respect to that, closing a lot of attackers. I think they give us that balance in there. Um, I'm thinking that this game, Malo Gusto is going to have a pass, so he's going to be on the right-hand side. Um, Malo is very good, very good attacking-wise. The final ball, very, very good. He's a very good passer of the ball as well. Yes, he's not an excellent player. He's not a regimes in terms of defending, but also a very good player in that regard. And I think that Chelsea, um, he's going to get in there. A left-hand side, Levi Kowal is still going to be in that zone, helping the team in that regard. And Chelsea are going to shift. So this time... Chelsea are not going to attack so much with the left hand side. I mean, they don't even do it consistently. And 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 this time that God Gusto is going to come in, that Chelsea will attack more on the right hand side for Chelsea to get a back three. Then 
Caicedo corner Galaga sits in front of the back four. Then they have uh, players pushing up uh, Modric Cope, Amarahim Sterling, and then Nicolas Jackson who have a lot of rotations from up front to make sure they take the pace. But I, I think that the game is in Chelsea's hands. I think that Newcastle um, will spring up intensity. It will sit in a 4 4 2 mid block. And it's going to be semblance of that Sheffield United game. So it's about Thiago Silva Bedlashile making the pitch constricted. It's also more of creating extra spaces where the two, the midfielders and then the center backs come. They are in close proximity of each other. Then they exchange quick passes so that they can get in behind and create spaces and pull the Newcastle center backs out of their shape. It's very important. You want to pull them out of their shape. You want to overlap. You want to underlap. You want to combine quickly in those zones and get the balls in behind it. It is very, very important for um, Chelsea to do that in a game against Newcastle. I, I mean, this is a game that Chelsea should be able to win. It's, it's, it should be a game that Chelsea should be able to ne negotiate a win. And I'm expecting that they get that done. Yeah, guys, so this was a quick pre-match analysis, Chelsea versus Newcastle. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing and turning on your notification. I will see you. Bye. Have a great day.